subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Insects make up the largest number of individual animals on land. We think that over 90% of animals on the planet are insects and they are found all around us in every part of the world in all environments. While they are also pests to us, they also play a crucial role in our ecosystems. So the more we understand them, the better it is for us as well as for them. In this episode, we're going to talk about the mating behaviors of insects. Specifically, we're going to talk about how insects mitigate risk of being eaten when attempting to mate because like birds, insects also have mating rituals which involve vocalization and calling which can in turn attract predators. How do these insects do this safely? How do males and females differ in their behavior and what research groups are studying these things? My name is Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. While mating, male insects call out and vocalize to attract females. A female would hear these sounds and move towards them to take a look at the male and then figure out if she wants to mate with him. If insect females can hear these sounds, of course, so can predators. So how do insects ensure they mate safely and what kind of tactics do they employ to reduce their risk from predators? To find this out and understand this better, a group of researchers from ISC set about studying insect mating behavior. They studied two species, tree crickets, which were insects whose mating behavior that the research group monitored. And these crickets were divided into four categories of calling males, non-calling males, responding females and non-responding females. For predators, the research group used green lynx spiders, which were the insects natural predators as well. These spiders can detect both sound, which produce vibrations in the air, and movement through the airflow sensitive hairs that are present all over their bodies, which help them sense the mate that is signaling as well as the one that's responding. This research team discovered last year that the males of an insect species who call out to females for mating don't really face any greater danger of drawing the attention of predators nearby. It turns out that both males and females attracted predators with equal probability as these researchers found. This is significant because the one thing scientists always assume when they study mortality, life cycle, behaviors, habits, etc. among insects is that signaling males or the ones that are vocal are often killed by predators. So this study suggested that there is no increased risk to signaling insects of either sexes which means that mating behavior can totally be excluded as a factor in studies on insect death patterns. The team performed their field surveys in the Chikbalapur district of Karnataka in an enclosure inside the IISC campus. The same team has also done a follow-up study which is out today in fact. The study shows that even though the two sexes might not be at a higher risk from predators, the behavior that leads to similar risk outcome is very different. It turns out that males that employ vocalization and thus could potentially attract predators also tend to employ tactics to actually reduce their risk, trying out different mating tactics to see what works under risky circumstances. For example, some males might sometimes sneakily mate instead of doing elaborate courtship rituals or they can go and position themselves near other calling males and then mate with any females that come nearby. This kind of tactic that the researchers call satellite tactic can actually make males expend less energy by not producing too many calls and preserving this energy for running away if needed from a predator. These kind of change or adaptation in mating behaviors in the face of risk or other benefits maybe is what ecologists refer to as alternative reproductive tactics or arts. 
In the new paper, which will be linked below in the description, the researchers found that when random movements were compared, male movement tended to significantly be directed towards other vocal or calling males, showing that males tend to switch to satellite strategies over a period of time. Adopting these arts or these alternate methods sometimes costed them a mating opportunity, yes, but it saved their lives. Yes, moving to near another calling male does increase risk, as you would intuitively think it does. But these insects that were being studied were in bushes. So satellite males would just go near a bush or to the next bush that a calling male was in and not into the same bush. So he could potentially attract the attention of a passing female that is zoning in on the sounds, but also effectively avoid a spider that could be in the same bush as the calling male. These were the male behaviors that the authors observed. Then the authors thought that responding to these signals could also be as risky as signaling. A common scene in most nature shows, as narrated by English natural historian David Attenborough, is that the male of a species is building nests or performing elaborate dances to go get a female's attention and consent. Which sex in a species invests more time and effort in attracting a mate depends on how much benefit it gets. Given that males generally reap greater benefit from multiple matings by spreading their genes and females are grounded by the process of gestation and rearing, males of most species tend to take the lead in attracting a mate. In some species, however, when males issue calls for mating, females of the species move towards the males in response to these calls. This primarily happens also in the insect group comprising of crickets, locusts and grasshoppers. This expenditure of energy and effort on the part of the female is theorized to be because of potential benefits for her. The male often burrows, which the female can then use for shelter after mating. But do they move less when there's risk of being eaten? Does this affect the number of offspring they have? We don't know. And to understand this, the researchers simulated different scenarios by changing the ratio of crickets and predators inside outdoor enclosures in their natural habitat. The team hand-painted and marked every cricket with a unique color code and observed how these crickets behaved. This is how they observed the males as well and this is how they observed the females. But it turned out that unlike the males, female movement behavior was unaltered. They don't have a very clear idea as to why females continue to respond to male vocalization and move towards them, but there are speculative theories. If females stay in the same bush and wait for any passing male or another male to come by to this bush so they can avoid being exposed when they go out, they are actually counterintuitively increasing their risk of accidentally being in the same bush as a predator which will follow a male that is nearby. So females don't really alter their behavior of normally going out and chasing after the male sound just like the predators do because that is still less risky for them than continuing to remain indoors in the same bush. If we have to delve down to the bottom line, this study shows that in females, the consequences of response to environmental threats are only survival related, whereas for males, it is both survival as well as mate searching behavior related. These kind of findings play a crucial role in further studies into insect populations and our understanding of our environment and the world around us.